Hi. Today I'd like to talk about fabulous failures. Okay. So, in the United States, uh, we made many silver patterns, uh, about 22 to 2500. And, you know, there was the rising middle class in the 1880s, there was the availability of silver, and so they came out with many patterns. And it was something like cars, you know, some were successful, some were Edsels, some didn't work out. And so, Sometimes, you know, it would, they'd have a poor name for a pattern. Sometimes it would be before its time, you know, so let's say before the deco area, they come up with a deco pattern. Sometimes it would look like some other pattern and, um, you know, people would take the original. Sometimes something would come out and then um, uh, the original would be a failure and then the next one would be good. You know, it's hard to say. Sometimes I think it was bad economic conditions, uh, sometimes name of the pattern, sometimes bad luck. So anyway, these are 10 patterns where I think they've got really good attributes, but for one reason or another, they just didn't, they just weren't successful. They weren't as successful uh, years ago and they're not successful now. So what I'm saying in different words is maybe these would be good patterns for you to collect. So, okay, first one. Uh, this is Grape by Dominic and Hoff. Now, in silver plate, the grape motif is one of the most popular. And in sterling, not so much. There's no successful grape pattern. This is a beautiful pattern. It's got wonderful work in the bowl. It didn't sell. It doesn't sell. Okay, next one. Raphael by Alvin, a great woman pattern. Six different Art Nouveau women with flowers above them. I think it's fabulous looking and, you know, Love Disarmed is so successful. That's got one motif. This has six, it's better. And, you know, the servers are quite sought after, but here I think the company, you know, made a mistake. They sold the serving pieces, they just didn't sell sets. I've never seen a set of, of Raphael. I've seen maybe two knives, three forks, five salads, a bunch of teas. I just don't see place set setting pieces. They didn't try to sell them. Okay, the next one is a designer. Anton Heller is probably my favorite American designer. He was way ahead of his time. The, the work that he did was, um, you know, just, way far ahead of what anyone else is doing. First he worked for Tiffany, he created the Olympian pattern, then he came and worked the next 30 years at Gorham. And some of the most successful patterns of all time were his. So he created St. Cloud, Clooney, Old Medici. His most successful pattern was Versailles. Versailles started in 1888 and on the cover of Gorham's 1896 catalog, they said in that one year, they sold one million pieces of Versailles. One year. So that's incredible that they could sell that kind of quantity. But in 1889, one year after Versailles, Anton Hellard created Caligny. It's an Italian scene with a, a nice woman in the middle. Why wasn't this successful? It, it was it never sold. It doesn't sell now. It looks a lot like Versailles. I think it's better looking than Versailles. Was it too expensive? I don't know. I don't know why it didn't go over, but it was a failure. Okay. His next one, his next failure was Nuremberg by Gorham. So it's a totally unique pattern. Every set, there's 12 different salad forks, there's 12 different knives, there's 12 different spoons. All German workers, you know, it's a completely unique pattern. It's really cool. Nobody seems to care. It was a, a real pooch then and it doesn't sell now. Okay, another one I really like. Old Masters by Gorham. It's the artists, it's the sculptures. Everyone has a big three-dimensional head on it. And um, you'd think this would be, you know, back then a winner, you know, cultured people, all that kind of stuff. You think today it'd be a winner? Uh-uh. 
It didn't sell then. It doesn't sell now. I mean, you know, Versailles, what do we got? 500 collectors? This? I think I got one. Uh, you know, I've had sets. They don't sell. Nobody wants it. So, it's a surprise to me. It, these are three great, well-executed patterns, and they didn't sell. Okay, failures weren't only in one era either. These are mainly Victorian. So, Gorham proved you can fail at any time. So, this is gold-tipped. So, they made three varieties. They made plain gold-tipped, they, they made one called golden wheat, and they made one that was snowflake. So, very unique pattern. I mean, they're modern looking, they're beautifully engraved, and the thing that's really cool about them is they have this gold tip on them, which is not gold plated, it's an actual piece of gold. So, when they came out with this in the 1950s, they really promoted it, and I saw an old price chart, and at that time, a place setting of Chantilly, the most popular pattern, was $27. This was $125 a place setting, and it has never sold. You know, quality that didn't sell, you know, very surprising. Here's another interesting pattern. This is Jubilee by Reed and Barton. Okay. Uh, it's a really cool looking deco pattern. So about 20 years ago, a coin shop in Chicago, a guy called me up, he said, do you have, do you like the pattern Jubilee by Reed and Barton? I was like, never heard of it. He said, well, you should, it's really cool. So I said, well, I'll send, send it up to me. So I looked at it, I was like, whoa, this has sort of the Greek key like Etruscan, and then the lines are really good. So I thought, this is a fabulous pattern. I, and I bought every bit I could and sold a few sets through the years. It's really hard to find. Modern American Silver of the Dallas Museum of Art, they showed a full-size picture of this pattern. And uh, so I guess it's recognized as, you know, a great pattern, but, you know, no one seems to buy it. So, bare mistake. Okay, one of my favorite patterns is this Regent by Durgan. Okay, so I think it's got a lot going for it. I love the piercing, I love the shells, I love the engraving, I love the little bows that are on it. You know, it blows Strasbourg away, so, so it's heavy. My God, this is great. So anyway, again, about 15 years ago, I said, I wanna have a set of this pattern. So I put out the word, and I worked for about 10 years to create a set. It took me that long to find 12 knives, forks, salad forks, teaspoons, a bunch of servers, and I showed it to my wife, and she said, no, I like my Dauphine better. So I sold the set, and a lady has collected it ever since, and I've got eh, maybe three, four collectors for it, but in general, nobody seems to know about this great pattern. There's all kinds of reasons for failure, and um, Here's an interesting story. This is Quintessence by Lunt. And they came out with this pattern in the 1990s. At that time, Lunt was making the Tiffany patterns also. So they made Audubon, which this is all different flowers. That was all different birds. And they're both rounded, the same type of shape. And Tiffany was coming out with a pattern called American Garden, which was all different flowers. Tiffany didn't like that Lunt came out with this pattern, and this pattern probably would have been successful, but Tiffany said, and they had a lot of influence on Lunt, do not make this pattern. So they stopped. The final one is one I've talked about before, and it's biggest failure in my, in my eyes. Okay, this is Knickerbocker Etched. Okay, so Knickerbocker Etched, came out in 1867, a full 10 years before Vine and Lapover. It's got, I think it's what Tiffany copied to create their most successful, most expensive pattern of all time, Vine. So, uh, sorry, Lapover. So it's where both of them are acid etched patterns. The Gorham one is really cool. It's got peas in the bowl of the pea spoon. 
It's got lobsters above the tines of the fork. It's got these beautiful flowers on the pie server. But in 1867, the country was in a depression. So the timing for an expensive new pattern in sterling was not right. And the pattern name, Knickerbocker Etched, that doesn't do anything for me. I think, you know, Lap Over Edge sounds much better. I think they could have chosen a lot of names for this thing. Knickerbocker Etch didn't do it. And so, as a result, it didn't take off. I had one collector for it who spent 20 or 30 years putting a set together. I helped him. I think it's got wonderful lines. It's got wonderful motifs. But it was my choice as the biggest failure. Thank you.